it's delightful to uh, be able to introduce my friend and our Deputy Center Director here at NASA Ames, Carol Carroll, to welcome all of you. Carol. Good morning and uh, welcome everybody to NASA Ames. I hope you all had a, had a safe and um, efficient travel getting here. I know I had a little trouble getting home on Sunday night with th some thunderstorms, so three hours on the tarmac. I hope none of you had any kind of issues like that. So we're really excited that you're here uh, this week and from your program it looks to be a really exciting week, one full of really important discussions. Um, here at Ames, um, we are a research center and so we do science and technology develop it, development and small missions and so we're kind of at the intersection of of science and exploration, and so uh, this kind of forum and discussion is right up our alley. Um, we're also uh, very um, innovative with our partnerships um, with commercial companies and other government agencies and other countries, um, and so that's an important way of how we at NASA are going to do all of these exciting missions. So um, the, the topics that you're going to cover this week are really exciting. Um, and I just wanted to say a few words about the importance of you all, you're the community that you're in and this bridge that you connect between science and exploration and how important it is at this point um, for NASA, especially with our renewed focus on the moon and the administration's priority on the moon and the work that you all have done uh, with the Lunar Landed uh, Science Workshop um, and the transformative lunar science white paper that you've provided to this administration has been really helpful. And I hope you all have good vigorous debate this week so that you can uh, continue to figure out what are the best things to do to take advantage of this opportunity. And because this is such an important priority for this administration, our administrator, Jim Bridenstine, uh, has prepared a video that we are delighted to share with you to welcome you all today. Hello, I'm NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, and I want to welcome everyone to the 2018 Exploration Science Forum. First, I want to congratulate the Solar System Exploration Research Virtual Institute on CERVI's 10th anniversary. As CERVI grew out of the Lunar Science Institute, its work has continued to expand the horizons of what we can achieve in space. CERVI's work and the work all of you are doing is producing great science and will help humans to travel farther into space than ever before. All of us at NASA are very excited to be going back to the moon and onto Mars. And we've planned for those human exploration missions to amplify our science findings as well. Going back to the moon has many benefits. In addition to the science and human spaceflight breakthroughs, it's going to be good for the economy as well. Our plans with commercial lunar landers and a gateway in lunar orbit are going to revolutionize our access to the moon and advance our work to go farther. I know all of you stand poised to take advantage of this great moment where we're on the cusp of achieving new milestones at the moon. And I want to thank the entire international community involved with CERVI and this Exploration Science Forum. It's going to take a lot of really talented and dedicated people working together across this planet to achieve our dreams. But I'm confident that together we are going to do great things. I look forward to hearing the outcomes of this conference. And I want you to know how much I support all of the great science and engineering work you're doing. Let's get back to the moon and head to Mars. Ad Astra. Wow, that was great. Thank you, Greg and Yvonne, for, uh, for working with headquarters to, to get that done. I thought that was a great idea. And you can just, you can tell as he speaks, it's from the heart. I mean, this is a genuine, a genuine passion and he's genuinely excited and, um, and the work you all are doing is pivotal to helping us plan what to do and how to do it. So thank you. Um, so what I would like to do now um, is introduce uh, the next speaker. Um, and so as I introduce uh, Dr. Yvonne Pendleton, who's the director of CERVI, um, you might find it rather strange if you were here last year because I think she said goodbye last year. And um, we wouldn't let her leave. No, um, as, you, as you may know, if you've talked to Yvonne, uh, she has decided that um, while being the director for Servia has been a fantastic 
um, opportunity, and she has done a fantastic job with that. She really wants to get back to research full time. And so she came to us about a year and a half ago, and we just wouldn't take her resignation. And um, she is going to go back to research full time, and we are currently in the search process to find a replacement, if there is one, um, for Yvonne. But um, I want to thank Yvonne for her years of dedication to this field at a very pivotal time and for getting the uh, Survey Institute to the point where it is today and so productive and so important. It couldn't be more well positioned than it is right now, and that is due in strong part to her leadership. So please welcome Dr. Yvonne Pendleton for the last time. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Carol. Those were wonderful words. And yes, it does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day, uh, but I'm happy to be here. It just means that hopefully every single time I get to do this better and better. Uh, we're very fortunate today to have had those wonderful opening remarks from our NASA administrator and our deputy center director. This is really going to be an exciting forum. I have a lot of things to tell you today. Some of them are high level and a few of them are logistics. Uh, so let's see, we do have some slides that we're going to put up here uh, in just a moment to remind me of some of these ideas. But for those of you who are new to the forum or new to Survey, I would just like to give you a little bit of information on who we are and what we do. We have a central office that's located here at NASA Ames Research Center. But we have the distribution of scientists and engineers all across the country that comprise the 13 teams that are currently part of Survey. In addition to that, we, in, in addition to the hundreds of scientists and, and engineers that that uh, includes, we have 10 international partners. And we're very excited that we're about to add our 11th international partner, which will be Japan. And we have with us today uh, two of uh, it, two people from uh, JAXA that are are going to be part of this new partnership, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Sayaka Yumamura and Dr. Nora Mitsu Kamimori from JAXA here today. Uh, I don't know that I got. Um, there's a third one, and I don't have that name handy. I just met him, but I cannot remember it. Uh, would you stand up, please? Okay, great. Ah, thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay. Yoshio Tukaka. Tukaku. Okay, is that close? Okay. And uh, although I can't pronounce your names very well, I'm extremely happy that you're here. So thank you for making that long trip. All right. Okay. Uh, we'd also like to welcome back Apollo astronaut Jack Schmidt. And uh, he will be giving a talk later today. Hi, thank you, Jack, for being here. Uh, and our NASA officials, Sarah Noble and Ben Bussey. I saw, there's Sarah, Ben is somewhere in here, there's Ben, okay, great. And so they pose as uh, NASA officials sitting in here, but they're also, uh, of course, you all know, very much members of our community. And the science that they do and the research that they've done uh, really brings a, a great perspective to, to Survey. This forum, brings together several communities, and it's therefore a really appropriate place to raise awareness for the call for the next set of teams that we will be uh, selecting for survey as we go forward. And so that is called a CAN, it's a Cooperative Agreement Notice. And so CAN 3 is what we're calling this one because it's the third round of selections. And you can see uh, behind me, uh, we have a draft that's out for the community for your comments right now. I encourage you to take a look at it. Anything you either don't understand that we could make more clear or something you think uh, maybe we should be emphasizing more, we will listen to you, consider your comments, and revise the draft, which will be re uh, released later, uh, later this summer or maybe early fall. Uh, so you can see the email address where you should send your comments, and they're due by July 3rd. So that's coming up really quickly. Please don't forget to have a look at it. Now, Sarah Noble will be giving a talk later today, so I assume you can ask her questions about that as well. She's our program scientist uh, for the Science Mission Directorate. Okay, I'd also like to uh, call your attention to an important program addition, and uh, that is 
that at the end of our parallel sessions on Thursday, we should all come back together in this room for a closing keynote talk. And this is going to be a great talk because this is by uh, Dr. Stephen Clark, who is the newly appointed to the newly created position uh, as a, a Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration. And that is within the Science Mission Directorate. And here's the important thing. We are here to bridge science and exploration, as you all know and have heard today. And his job is to make sure that happens. So we will be keenly interested in what he has to say and ways that we can help support him and his efforts. So I encourage you to come back and listen to that talk. It'll be at 3.35 on Thursday. It'll be a short talk, maybe 25 minutes. And uh, think of questions that you want to ask him as well. Now today, today we'll have a distinctly lunar focus. We're going to have a panel discussion in just a few minutes that I'm going to ask Greg Schmidt to come up first and introduce to you because this is something that we did back at NASA headquarters at the end of May and it was highly successful. It was well attended by a lot of people at NASA headquarters that came down to the main auditorium there and it was so informative that we thought you should get to see it too. So we're going to start off with that. We're going to continue with talks by Sarah Noble and Ben Bussey from the headquarters perspective. And then we will have Jack Schmidt talking about how we might accomplish transformative lunar science. Now tomorrow, if I could have the next slide please. Tomorrow, after all the great talks and posters, we're going to end the day in a really fun way. We're going to have the recently premiered movie entitled Chesley Bonestell, A Brush with the Future. If you don't know about that art, please come to this. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, see your program for details. Admission is free, and it will be right here in this room, but you do have the option to purchase tickets if you want to have pizza during the movie. Now, I also want to tell you about the dates for next year's forum. First of all, thank you all for coming this year on our not usual time, but it turns out next year is an also very difficult time because July 20th next year is going to be the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landing. And as, and as fellow lunatics, <laughs> you guys are going to be called upon to be in many places on that day. It's a Saturday, July 20th. So what we decided yesterday in our executive council meeting with all the PIs of Survey is that we're going to make July 20th the kickoff for a great week of lunar exploration. And so you can be wherever you need to be on July 20th, helping the community and the uh, general public understand the importance of the moon, and then you can travel and be here for the following week. We will have the forum on this, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the week following July 20th. So those dates are July 23rd, 24th, and 25th right here, same place, uh, just, uh, and back in July. So we're going back to, our, back to our roots. All right, I'd like to thank the local organizing committee uh, for this ESF. They always do such a fabulous job. It is headed by Yvonne Ibera. She is our executive assistant, and the group that makes up the local organizing committee is the central office staff for Servi. So if you see them up at the front desk or wherever and you think they've done a good job, which I'm pretty sure you do, please let them know. I'd also like to thank our scientific organizing committee, which was led by Jen Heldman, who's in the back of the room there, Andy Rivkin, who I believe is here, maybe not, okay. Uh, but they've done a fabulous job with the, uh, the other members of the SOC Many people worked really hard to make this year's forum all that it can be. Their names are listed in the program, and uh, you can let them know how well you think it goes or how we can improve it. Another way to let us know how we can improve it is through the survey, the NESF survey. This will only take you about five minutes. It's available online, and uh, we really appreciate your comments. If you think the forum is getting better and better each year, it's because some people have taken the time to actually fill that in. Okay, now on to logistics. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention new reports that are available. You can see on here. There's several. We have the fourth year annual report, 
we work really hard on this. It's very nicely organized, I think, and I think it will tell you a lot about survey, especially if you're thinking about applying to CAN 3. You'll want a copy of this to find out what the current teams are doing to see how you might augment that or fill in the gaps. Those are available along with two other white papers <clears throat> that I've mentioned here, the Transformative Lunar Science White Paper that was done earlier this year and the League Report, Advancing Science of the Moon. You'll find these either in the back on some round tables or in the front registration desk. We have a few in both places. If you don't want to carry a lot of paper home, these, uh, at least the fourth year report is also available online. Okay, now on to something you really care about, which is lunch. And so uh, we have fo focus groups at lunch today and tomorrow, as we usually do, and I really encourage all of you to pick at least one, maybe two, to go to. Focus groups are a great way to get the community involved and catalyzed around various topics that you think we should be talking about. And so we have several focus groups that are already well established. There's room for more. If you want to start a new one, let us know. But if you want to have lunch while you're at the focus group, this is what you need to do. Today, uh, on, uh, today is uh, an Italian buffet, and it can be yours for the low price of $10, which includes a beverage. Uh, please buy your tickets this morning so that we know if our guess is inaccurate. If we need to get more pizza or more Italian food, we will get that. Now tomorrow, please see the signs at the registration table. Here is also a list. It looks complicated. It's really not. If you go to the specialties website that's listed there or in the front in the registration if you want more information, um, it will tell you, it will walk you right through how to place your order. This is an advantage to us because you can place your own order and pay for it and then if you designate the time, we want you to designate the time for it to be picked up, then some members of our staff will go there and pick up your lunch and bring it here and have it available individually with your name on it so it'll be very easy for you to grab your lunch and go to the focus group. Focus group leads, please talk to Brad Bailey. He has some ideas and ways where we can um, make the focus groups even uh, more influential than they have been, and so please see him. He's, he wants to talk about you, talk to you and get your input. All right, I think I am very close to the end of this long list of things to tell you about. Um, yeah, okay. So finally, I just wanna say that the Exploration Science Forum takes the better part of a year to plan and coordinate, and that is done superbly by our Deputy Director, Greg Schmidt, and uh, along with our associate directors, Christina Gibbs and Brad Bailey. So the rest of our central office also chips in, but these people are really the ones thinking about how to put this together and, and really make it the best it can be. And they work with me to run survey all year long in addition. We do a lot more than just the forum. But this is what you get to see. This is our face forward to you, the community, that is probably the most evident. So I hope you're enjoying it, I hope you're getting the most out of it, and I hope we continue to grow. With that, I'd like to say welcome, and now on with the show. Okay.